just can't get away from it. We live in a noisy world. Some people say it's the price that has to be paid for progress. Others believe that if we want quiet, all we have to do is demand it and, of course, pay for it. Although the Noise Abatement Act was passed by Parliament more than five years ago to make things quieter, life today seems just as noisy as ever it was. Anyone can make an official complaint against loud and unnecessary noise. The difficulty with mechanical noise is to find a way of reducing it without losing power. Jet engines are comparatively quiet in themselves. The noise comes from the turbulence set up behind the engine as the high-speed jet blast meets the surrounding air. Southampton is one university carrying out research under contract for the government into jet and other aircraft noise problems. More than half a million pounds is being spent here and at various Ministry of Technology establishments throughout the country in trying to solve the difficulties of aircraft noise alone. Compressed air is being fed to this model jet nozzle so that the effects of the turbulence can be measured. But the problem's not going to be an easy one to solve. The only solution seems to lie in altering the shape of the jet nozzle, since trying to break up the jet stream by physical means only makes things worse. The airlines are doing all they can to reduce the noise. They've already sacrificed up to 10% of their payload in the public's interest by fitting suppressors to the rear of their jet engines to make them quieter. But one of the unavoidable noises comes from ground running tests. If aircraft are to be safe and efficient, these must be carried out. BOAC alone spent 340,000 pounds on earth banks in the maintenance area to break up the noise. Another £154,000 was spent on the giant mufflers that are connected to the engine tailpipe to make life quieter for people living nearby. There are strict rules about running at full power, and all airlines have to keep these test periods down to a minimum. New aircraft coming into service are quieter, but so far it's cost BOAC £480,000 to fit suppressors to their jet fleet. But they still make a lot of noise when taking off, despite the extra ironmongery fitted to the engines. Something is being done about this. Mobile monitoring vehicles belonging to the Ministry of Aviation check the noise levels in the surrounding residential areas of each jet aircraft that takes off. They are there, day and night, to see that the anti-noise regulations are enforced. These require aircraft captains to keep the noise levels within permitted limits by climbing at full power to get as high as they can before reaching the residential areas. A great deal of noise though, even at these reduced levels, still penetrates the 60,000 homes around London's busy international airport. The government recently offered a two and a half million pound grant to help residents soundproof their homes. Double glazing the windows helps to keep the noise out. This demonstration gives an idea of the effectiveness of the recommended window design. If windows are to be kept closed though, artificial ventilation is needed and units like this can be expensive. Road traffic noise exceeds the limit that experts consider bearable.
It's going to worry a lot more people soon when proposed legislation comes into force. Prosecutions are likely, and many vehicles may be ordered off the road, including noisy new ones. Manufacturers will have to conform by fitting efficient silencers that can keep pace with the latest engine development, like this one. It was developed by scientists at Southampton University to give quiet power. One of the most spectacular breakthroughs is the silencing of one of the most irritating noises, building machinery. The noise from pile drivers usually drives most people up the wall. This one, produced by a firm of engineering contractors, has driven 20 miles of piles in and around London and other cities during the past year in silence. It's so quiet that it can be put to work near hospitals, offices and built up areas, even at night, without the occupants knowing that it's in use. 25 yards away, it can't even be heard. This concrete breaker developed by another contracting company, breaks up a thousand square yards of six inch concrete in an eight hour day. Work that normally calls for 50 road drills. It takes energy to create this noise and energy to fight it. The odd thing is why we put up with it for pneumatic drills can be silenced. Tests have been carried out at the building research station with the cooperation of manufacturers on muffled and unmuffled drills to compare the efficiency and measure the noise levels of different breakers. Compressors and drills can be seen working on sites today where the noise level has been reduced by as much as 60% without appreciable loss of power. But many local authorities have yet to control the noise in their areas. A hundred years ago, Florence Nightingale complained about the rustle of her nurse's skirts in the hospital wards. What would she have said about the noisy world of today and the fact that so many of us seem willing to put up with it?